name is Josh Jenkins. This is my week eight final project for FTT 100. Today is July 12th, 2023. For part one of my final project, I'll be using my Glock 43X. It was manufactured in 2019. Uh, it is a semi-automatic striker fired single action uh, weapon. Uh, it's mag fed and it also has what they call a safe action finish. For part two of my final project, I'd like to go over uh, the cycle of operations. But before we do anything else, we have to make sure that this weapon is clear and safe. As you can see, good and folks, there is no ammunition anywhere on my, de uh, my table here. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna point in a safe direction and we're gonna hit the mag release. I'm gonna drop the magazine, see that there's no amp, no ammo in it whatsoever. We're gonna lock the slide back. We look down, do a visual and physical examination. See that there's no ammo in there. We'll release the slide. Again, pointing in a safe direction. Release the hammer. This weapon is now clear. Now to help demonstrate the cycle of operations, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use some snap caps. Got a couple right here. These are simulated rounds that allow uh, the testing of the cycle of operations. So we're going to load up a couple. And we're going to try to do this without this jamming because this gun is pretty pretty dirty. And so that's ne that's parts uh, that's parts three and four. So <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take our simulated snap caps, we're going to put it up into our mag well, and the first and this is going to be our feeding and chambering. So we're going to pull back on the slide. The round's going to sit there. It's going to start to feed in there ever so slightly, and now it's in. And now, as it was feeding and chambering, it's now locked. And as you can see, got a little, oh, you see that? Look at that. Had a failure to feed right there. So let's see if we can eject that real quick. This is a great way to get that done. Eject that round. Let's try that again. So never goes right the first time. So we're going to feed and chamber. Now that it is locked, you can see that the trigger is now forward. Now I'm going to point this in a safe direction again, even though it's unloaded, we're still going to point it in a safe direction. And you should hear a distinctive click with this snap cap. That's the firing portion of this. There you go. Now I'm going to release. And as you release in a normal round, after it fired, the spent uh, gas would push back and eject, or this would unlock and, uh, extract and then eject the round so there you go <laughs> so normally what would happen there would be another round in here probably can uh, do this real quick so it's going to go do the same thing again where it's going to rack another round in there and the same process where we point in a safe direction and you should hear a distinctive click and then again the unlocking extraction and ejecting and then the further cocking of the new the new round in place. Okay, hey, there we go. So that is the cycle of operations with my Glock 43X. So for the third third part of my final project, I'd like to do a field strip of this of this particular uh, Glock 43X. So and that's pretty simple. Uh, you need to the first thing we need to do is we're just going to drop this magazine down and take a look at that. Part of field stripping is also identifying parts that you need to clean later on, which again is going to be part four. So we can see here in our uh, mag well, it's kind of dirty. I've been firing this recently, so this is pretty dirty, so we'll set that aside. Now with the Glock 43X, what we need to do is it's got these two, it's got a uh, takedown pins here and then takedown pin on the other side. So what we're going to do is we need to pull this slide back ever so and then pull those uh, pull these uh, takedown pins uh, back so that we can pull the slide forward. Now, you can do this standing up like this and I've seen it done like this. So we're gonna try it like this because I had trouble last time. So let's see, so we're gonna pull back ever so slightly. See, never goes right the first time. So I'm gonna get those, those, ta those takedown pins, push it forward, and then the slide comes off. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the, the major components. Obviously, this is the frame. You got the slide rails here. You got the mag release up here. You got the mag release right there. I don't know if you can see that in there. Pushing in, and then you've got your takedowns right here. So we're gonna set our frame right there. 
Then we're going to look at our slide. So the first, one of the first things you want to notice is the guide rod and guide spring. So we're going to take that off so you can press it just a little bit, get it off the top of that, uh, that uh, little divot right there. I don't know if you can see that. Get it off of that. Set that aside. And again, we're going to look for some uh, carbon buildup and fouling. So it looks like there's a little bit here just from my firing. Another component we're going to pull off here is going to be our barrel. So we're going to come over here and push it up just a little bit, get it at an angle and pull it out. Take a look at that. Looks like a little bit of dog hair right there. It's uh, got a dog. You get dog hair everywhere. So the barrel looks pretty nasty. So we're going to set that down right here too. Set it on this really nice mat that I got. And then of course we have our slide, which houses our firing pin uh, here as well. So that right there is a field stripped Glock 43X. So the fourth part of my final project, what I'd like to do is clean uh, my weapon. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're field stripping, you want, you want to be always looking for places that need to be cleaned. So specifically, I was say, mentioning my, my magazine here. It's got some uh, buildup right here, some dirt, some carbon fouling and whatnot. Uh, on my frame here, you can see I've got some buildup here on one of the slides. Got some back here, and it looks like I've got some dirt down in the mag mag well too. So I'm gonna do that. The barrel, it's got it's got a fair amount uh, right there as well. So hopefully I get that to come into focus. Let's see, there we go. So I've got some buildup right here, definitely right there. So I'm just gonna see. Got a clean finger. I'm just gonna grab a little bit right there. Oh yeah, yeah, it's dirt. So so we're gonna do that. We're gonna clean that, and it looks like there's some. Uh, some dirt up, up around the firing pin area as well. Uh, the guide rod and spring, it looks like it's fairly clean, but we're still gonna clean it anyway because we all need that. And like I said, the barrel looked pretty nasty. It had some dog hair on it, so we're gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> SDI provided a really nice cleaning kit too. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna use some of those tools in here, but I'm also gonna use a couple of tools that I've personally used in my in my everyday. So what I'm going to do uh, is, uh, first off, I'm going to put gloves on because I don't like getting my hands dirty and, you know, we're smarter than that. All right. So what we're going to do first, uh, SDI did provide a couple of different cleaners. Um, they provided both a <clears throat> accuracy oil and then a carbon destroyer. This is the cleaner. This is the oil. Uh, I like to use uh, Lucas's CLP. Um, you know, you can get it in spray form or you can get it in this type of form right here. Whatever floats your boat, whatever you fancy. So, what we're going to do here, and I've also prefer to use a boar snake when it comes to my barrel because I, I like to be able to pull that through a few times. So, and of course, the brush that came with the Otis cleaning system over here. So, and if you're in a pinch, which, you know, I've typically always done, but again, this is what I typically do, but because, you know, this is with SDI and whatnot, I typically use just standard old toothbrush, medium, so. But to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the SDI provided carbon destroyer, okay? And we are gonna put just a little bit on the major components of this. So right here, right here where the barrel will sit, right here on some of this, get some down there in that mag well. And then we're gonna take the brush that we were provided and we're gonna clean off those dirty areas. And already you can see how much cleaner that looks just from the, just from that quick little, uh, quick little uh, scrub right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we have all these components cleaned up, get into all those little tight spots, right? We wanna make sure that we get that done, so. Make sure I stay in frame. Make sure we get those takedown, takedown pins as well, or takedown uh, pulls. We also want to make sure we get into every little area we can, right? All those little areas, and that's what's good about this brush right here, or you know, a toothbrush right there, a medium, is it's going to get down in there, and you know, you can get all those major areas. So, other side of this, you can get into this back area. I find that dirt and dirt and uh, boogies like to hide back there, so we clean that off pretty well. See right there, that's what, just sweeping that back there, there's that nastiness right there. See, so, yeah, I'll just grab that and pull it off. Show that right there on camera. Yeah, just nastiness that comes out. It's not a lot, but again, it, stuff likes to hide there. So we're gonna set our slide down, or our frame, excuse me, not our, not our slide. 
pick up my uh, magazine. It's not as bad. It's still got a little flex to it, so I may throw a little bit on here just because little. You don't need a lot. Do the same thing. What we'll do is we'll push down, get some of that oil down there, and kind of help with that lubrication a little bit. But we'll use some of that that accuracy oil here in a little bit. But we'll just get down there, and make sure we get that cleaned up too. Clean the outsides. Make sure you don't when you're cleaning this when you're putting oil on. It, make sure you don't get get it down the witness holes because that can potentially mess up your magazine as well. So that's done, we'll set that over there. Next thing we'll do is we'll do the slide itself. Now when you're cleaning the slide and you're using any kind of oils or sprays or anything, you wanna make sure that you do not get it down in that firing pin area. So we're gonna, so gonna put this at an angle to help prevent that. We're just gonna put a little bit of dab here and there. And same thing, so come in here and we're just going to start scrubbing on that as best we can. Not really scrubbing so much as just, you know, light brushing. Get the insides, get the outsides. We want to make sure that we get everything, right? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> By the way, at the time of recording, the air quality is just absolutely awful right now. So we're going to make sure we get all these little grooves and everything as well. One side, other side, just make sure we get everything right. Make sure we come on the outside too. All right, I'm going to set that over here. Same thing with the guide rod and spring, a little bit of oil on it. Not a lot, a little dab will do. And as I'm, as I'm uh, doing this brush, I'm spinning it a little bit. This is how I was taught how to do it. You know, I don't know if that's the best way, but it's how I was always taught how to do it. Get the top, get the bottom. Now, I'm gonna set my brush down. Now for the barrel, again, SDI provided a great cleaning kit with it, Otis. And again, it's it's I use it for other for other guns, but for this, for handguns specifically, I like to use my boar snake. And that that in itself, and I'll show you what it is. It's literally just a long piece of nylon, right? And it's got these nice little brass cleaners on them, one, two, and three. And what it allows you to do. It allows you to, well, first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of this, this carbon destroyer on the front right here, this little bit right here, not a lot. And then what you do is you pick sides you wanna go from. I always go from the back to the front, take a little brass, little brass weight right there, pull it through, get it all the way up to the right there, get it all the way up to right there, and then you pull it through. And then once you get to that, it's that last little cleaning bit right there that pulls it all the way through too. Now, I was always taught to do this three times. You know, yeah, man, I always do it three times. She always told me. That's what dad always told me was to do it three times. So I'm going to do that. That's, that was one. That was two. And now this is three. Now we'll look down that barrel. That barrel is just so much cleaner than it was. So, I mean, I don't know if you can see that right there. That was just the nastiness that came off of it. And here's some of the dirt that I pulled through off on it. So you can see right in this area here, that was some of that dirt that came off. Just, just absolute large amounts of dirt. So now, now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the, the excess off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab me just a standard paper towel. And again, make sure Wipe this down pretty good. Get all the excess off because we don't need none of that excess. And it's important to clean your weapons. This one specifically, this is my everyday carry, so. And that, that cleaned up. Come in here, get some of this, get some of these bogeys out. Again, this is just a standard shot paper towel or I don't know. It's it's they it doesn't leave residue and stuff, so that's always important too. Cause you don't want that in your action. I'm gonna close up the carbon destroyer. What I'm gonna do is bring out the accuracy oil, and we're just gonna lightly, lightly lube this up. So any places that are where wear and tear could potentially be. And really, you know what? I'm gonna take. Give me another paper towel. Just gonna put a little bit of that on here. 
There's ways to do this. This is just one way I prefer how to do it. And I'm just going to lightly oil that. It's got that nice little sheen on it now. Come over to the barrel. I'm going to put a little bit extra on this just, just because. We'll do the same thing with the guide rod here in a second. That's why I always got to keep a handle on things. Let's put a little extra here on the guide rod and spring. Okay. Then we're going to do the same here. Again, remember, keeping this at an angle because you don't want it getting down in there. So we're going to put a little bit on here. Make sure we get it in all those slidey areas. On the outside, too. And I wanted to show you, you see how, that, how much cleaner that is uh, right there? And then how much cleaner that has become, too. So... And what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble our weapon um, as a kind of a secondary to the when we field strip it. Because when you field strip, you have to put it back together. But, you know, in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to put it back together and show, kind of reverse it. So what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our barrel, or excuse me, our slide and our barrel. And we're going to just reverse the order of operation. So we're going to take our barrel, put it in an angle, slide it in. We're going to take our guide rod, we're going to put this in, the fatter end goes towards this way. Again, like I said earlier, we're going to get it right over that notch, give it a little bit of pressure and pull it up, put it down, make sure it's seated correctly. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure, we're going to take our slide, barrel, and guide spring. We're going to put it on the rails, we're going to make sure that we get everything lined up, and we're going to start from the front and move our way back, make sure we get it all the way back. Get it back here, that area right there, and then we're just gonna hit the slide, slide it back, make sure it seated correctly, and it did. Point in a safe direction, pull the trigger, and that weapon is now back together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a final cleanup because there's some excess uh, oil that'll show up. So we wanna make sure we get all that off because last thing you wanna do is have a slippery gun in your hand. And that is a fully field stripped, cleaned, and then reassembled uh, Glock 43X. After you get done field stripping and cleaning, you need to do a functions check to make sure everything is completed. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, again, slide back. You can see that there is, you know, you get me in focus here. There's no magazines out, there's no ammo there. Upon a physical inspection, there's nothing there either. <clears throat> so we're gonna, we're gonna close that back. We're gonna close the slide back. We're gonna safe direction, pull the trigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and get grab one of our uh, snap caps again. Take our magazine with our snap cap. We're gonna try to load two this time, see if I can actually get this to work. Load it up, put it in the magwell, and then we're gonna go get one. Good, nice good snap. And then we're gonna eject that round. Snap cap, excuse me, not around. Get one coming, uh, have one get locked back into the barrel, ready to go. Safe direction, pull the trigger, listen to this snap. That's good, and then we're going to eject. Slide stays open at, because, as it normally would, and then there you go. It looks like the functions of this weapon are correct, and we have correctly cleaned and reassembled our weapon.